Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Today, we're going to be working on two things. One, working on our infinite food storage, or as I like to call it, the deep freezer. And two, we're going to take a little bit of that cooling potential and really provide some cooling for our main water tank here. The tank's getting up to be about 35 degrees, and that's because the alternate source of water is coming from this cool steam vent. The steam that comes out of the cool steam vent comes out at 110 degrees. Now our little contraption here is good enough to cool it down enough to get it to water to get inside the pipes, but it's still a little warm. So it kind of gives us a few different things that we'd like to cool down. We want to cool down this water, we want to cool down this water, and we need to have our deep freezer. If I were to cool this tank and this cool steam vent, it'd be a waste of energy. Because we're already cooling the output of the water, there's no reason to cool the input. So we're going to concentrate our efforts on here. But first, a couple of updates. A lot of cred to Shubby who helped me clear up some confusion that I caused myself. I was confused why we're not bankrolling a lot of barbecue. And after looking at it, I'm like, wait a minute. When the hatches are dying, it's only putting out 2,000 grams of meat. Now, this was after like a seven hour recording session, so I was probably getting a little tired, and I was confusing the weight of the meat with its actual calorie count. A thousand grams of meat is actually 1,600 calories. So when the hatch dies and gives us 2,000 grams of meat, it's still giving us 3,200 calories of meat, which then the 3,200 calories of meat becomes 4,000 calories of barbecue. The description here could be a little bit clearer, maybe even putting the grams in parentheses, because sometimes you only see the ingredients in grams, not in calories. For instance, when an auto sweeper picks it up. What I've kind of narrowed it down to was all the additional work that we were doing on the industrial sauna. My guess is that when all the dupes were working on this, even if they didn't have a priority of working on it, they were still providing ingredients for it, and maybe that was taking the duplicates away from the work of grooming. Probably ended up with these stone hatches not being as happy as they normally are. And as soon as your stone hatches stop getting happy, they stop laying as many eggs, which means less meat. Since I've noticed the problem, the food's going back up there, so I don't think it's a huge deal. The other thing that we have to keep in mind is we have two duplicants who actually have a bottomless stomach. And the bottomless stomach is another 500 calories. Well, with two duplicants, it's another 1,000 calories, which is about another half dupes worth of food on max difficulty. By the way, the two offenders are Black Panther and Wonder Woman. They are our two bottomless stomach dupes. Additionally, I actually want to put in a proper hospital. I've never really built a proper hospital, and I think it'd be something a little fun, but a little necessary. You want your dupes as healthy as possible in a max difficulty run. So if we had a hospital where it could cure all their diseases, make all the medicines, etc., etc., I think it would help the stress level in the long run. Now, right now, we're having a good clip of it. You can see our stress levels are... 1% at the highest. That's just based on luck, because normally it's a little higher. Also in the background, we're going to be watching the grass grow. And that's in a popular American statement. I don't know if it actually reaches out outside of America. That'd be interesting to hear in the comments if you've ever heard the watching the grass grow. What it basically means is you can sit there and stare at it for as long as you can, and you're not really ever going to notice the grass grow. And that's kind of like what we're doing here in our steam room. It's happening. It's just happening very slowly. We're also starting to work on orbital research. Now, we don't actually have the orbital research completed. We're just knocking out the novice, the advanced applied science research before we get to space and are able to complete the orbital research. So what will happen is they'll research all three layers and then just stop at orbital research. And then we'll click on the next one and they'll research all three layers here. And we do this because they literally only have to do the orbital research on each technology and it keeps the act of actual doing the orbital research in space to a shorter time frame. But the other reason we're going to be paying attention to this is because I think this is where we're actually going to put the thermo aqua tuner for our cooling up here. Now, this is probably not going to be one of my most efficient designs because we're going to be taking the cooling potential here and having to transport all the way up here but it will allow us to inject more heat into our industrial sauna so i think that in itself is a decent trade-off we haven't had much luck with the duplicants lately what i'm trying to find is a decent set of three dupes that we wouldn't want to shy away from i wouldn't want to roll the dice on these three because of may with her nyctophobic and anemic Kind of like, ugh. But what I'm looking for is a good doctor and decorator. So as soon as I find a couple of good doctor decorators, I think we're going to roll the dice. 
and try to see if PowerShell will give us one of these duplicates. But these three don't really cut the mustard. There's another one. Cutting the mustard. Is that just an American phrase or does that reach out across the borders too? So we can probably start on the mechanics of getting the thermo aqua tuner and the cold storage going, but we're gonna have to wait for it to fill with steam. And I think the system we're gonna use is the ice box system. We're gonna run a cold pipe through a box that's full of nothing but ice. And then we can use the ice to actually cool down this tank and then run a pipe through that ice to bring that chill up here. This only needs to be at minus 18, and this box only needs to be at around 25. The great thing about using the ice box is, once the thermo aqua tuner actually makes the ice, it doesn't have to work too hard to maintain the ice block, which makes it, in my opinion, one of the more efficient designs of cooling. Let me see what I come up with. Okay, this has happened for the last time. We're gonna put some fail safes in here. Dr. Banner apparently has taken a rad bolt to the head. Here's the fail safe, and it's gonna get a little loopy. This is what the automation looks like. All we've done was added a duplicate motion sensor. If there's a duplicate in here, the duplicate motion sensor is gonna send a green signal. The green signal is gonna come into a not gate, flip this to red, and then this and gate won't be double green. So we basically have an AND gate into an AND gate into the Radbolt generator. This AND gate is collecting from the timer sensor and this switch. So when the timer sensor is ready to fire, it'll flip this to green and turn one side of this AND gate green. And then as long as there's not a duplicate in here, then both of them will be green and then it'll shoot a Radbolt over. If there is a duplicate in here, it'll flip this to red. This little input B will be red. Even when the timer sensor wants to send the Radbolt it won't be able to because the second part's not green. It's a little bit complicated and we could just move the firing up and then around and into another reflector and that way dupes don't get hurt. But let's be honest, this is kind of cool. So here's the start of our ice block and we're going to let Star-Lord suffer for just a little bit because he's a giant idiot. Obviously he could look around before he finished that last block and be like, you know what? Maybe I should build this from the other side, but he chose not to, so he's in timeout. What we're going to do is just drop this water right into here. And that way, we don't have to go through any complicated process. All we need to do is drop it. And then we're going to put doors right here and set up that same system we had before. So when this is an ice block, the metal doors will actually exchange chill with this tank. We're going to need to do some reconfiguration with the tank, but that's easy. All right, Dengus, come on out. Look at this beautiful progress we're making over here in the industrial sauna. Some of it's definitely due to this glass forge. We started dropping molten hot glass all the way down into here, and it, it's so very nice. Every once in a while, once the steam gets up to here, we'll run maybe one piece of steel through. And it really has grabbed a lot of this temperature and bringing it up. When it gets bad to worse, Star-Lord has been binge eating and literally... He's eaten 100,000 calories. Thanks, buddy. Oh, yeah, there's some more muckroot. Just keep shoveling it in. So you can look down in the description. You can see he's eating 30,000 calories per cycle because, you know, he's upset. Well, he's upset because he's been walking in polluted water. And he's been walking in polluted water because our base has gotten warm enough where our thimble reed system stopped growing and then back up all the pipes. So we had to put the emergency liquid reservoir in until we get this thing fixed. And we're really close. Look at all this beautiful steam in this room. As soon as this room completely turns into steam, it's time to add more water. Right now, there's about 2K worth of pressure of steam in here. We want to sit around 10 to 15K. And that actually helps the temperature stabilize more. All right, step one is going to be to drop this water. And all we're really doing is filling up these two tanks. Now, the difficult part of it is you don't actually want a full tile worth of water. And I know that sounds counterintuitive. It's because when water freezes, the ice actually expands the tile a little bit and you can actually crack some walls that way. And we don't want to do that. So we're going to try to get it just right. Who am I kidding? It's probably just going to be a mess. And so we're just going to drop the whole thing and then take out what we can. Oh yeah, here we go. Clark's going to open her up. We're going to leave it open for just a minute. We're going to let the water equalize and be able to sweep everything out. This is the next step in the build. We're putting a bunch of mechanized airlocks made of steel. And I didn't necessarily want to spend two tons in steel doors just for some simple transference. Mechanized airlocks can only be built out of ores or steel. And steel is just significantly better than the rest of the ores as far as thermal conductivity. Now we're separating the temperature sensors onto two sides. That way... 
we don't have to open all these doors and inject all the chill to all the water at the same time, especially considering our hot water primarily comes in from one side. So the way I think it's going to work is these doors are going to stay closed for longer because this side is going to hit its chill point quicker. If they were all in one thermo sensor, all the doors would be open or closed and we'd be wasting some cooling. Here's the next stage of our chill block. We have aluminum radiant liquid pipes taking petroleum all the way through and this is gonna chill it all the way down and create ice in this whole area. We're using the best insulation we have right now and that is insulated obsidian. Now right now we have this thermo aqua tuner set at minus 18 degrees. It's gonna take a while, this petroleum was pretty hot, but eventually it should turn this whole thing into one big block of ice. And then we'll be ready for our next stage. So while we're waiting for that block of ice to turn, we can get started on the deep freezer. Now I know there's a lot of ways to do this, but this is the one I've had the success with. First, we gotta play the pause game. We're gonna have some water dropped off in here, and we just want a very little blob. Now, normally what happens is even just a tiny little blob will end up going through two tiles. So I try to separate it out by one. All right, we have Happy getting ready to drop off some water, and now we gotta play the pause game. We're just gonna hit the pause button a few times. We're gonna watch the bottle appear up here, and just as soon as we've seen the first little drop, we're gonna take the bottle off. That's probably too much, but we'll see. So I was playing with this for a little bit, realizing, okay, what am I doing wrong? And it's because I had this too tight. What we're gonna do is drop this one. And when we deconstruct this tile, it'll allow the oil to fall down here, which then will create this into a vacuum, hopefully. Perfect. Now we have a vacuum in this tile. So when we remove this tile, this is gonna maintain to be a vacuum. And so we can work in here without having to worry about anything. And what we're actually going to put in first is our conveyor chute. One conveyor chute in, and then we can brick all this back up and not have to worry about it. Now that it's in there, we can add the last insulated tile. And then we can corner build this and it will destroy all this oil. It doesn't really matter. And now we have our perfect vacuum for our deep freezer. And before that gets broken by something that we don't want it to, Let's throw our chlorine in there. We go to our conveyor loader, we allow manual use, and we put some bleach stone in there. And what do we get for our efforts? Well, we got an entire tile full of nothing but chlorine. Now you wanna make sure you have enough bleach stone in here that it emits enough chlorine to get this into a solid, say 1500 to 2000 grams. Otherwise, even a little bit of rot will off gas and overwrite the chlorine. We'll see how it does. We'll let all this stone evaporate and we'll see what our final gas pressure is. Now this would take an absolute eternity to actually freeze this if it were still connected to this water tank. Okay, how does this happen? Explain to me, smart guy. Dr. Banner, huge 40 pound brain, and yep, and he ends up building himself into a tile. Okay, now we need to actually hurry because Dr. Banner is suffocating. Way to go, Supergirl. Way to think outside the box. But now that this is all covered with insulated tile, we're not gonna be losing all the chill that this is dropping off, and this will now be able to turn into ice. And then I realize I actually forgot one set of piping, so I have to go back in here. Woe is me. What we're actually missing is the second set of aluminum pipes. This set is actually our deep freezer chill. Not a big deal, we'll throw them in there. Okay, this was a lesson in pipe spaghetti. So here's our line that is transferring chill with our nice little freezer box. And as you can see, it kind of weaves in and out. It's all made out of insulated obsidian, except for the two points up here and the points gathering chill down here. Now up here, we have our radiant liquid pipes and they will come in contact with the chlorine here and this metal tile. Now the chlorine actually did a decent job. We got 1800 grams of chlorine in here, which is perfect. Wanted to give a quick update on this beautiful beast. We now have over five kilos of steam sitting in here. The more we create plastic, the more water is gonna be introduced in the environment. But right now I'm sitting at almost 40 tons of plastic. So I'm like, hey, we're good for a minute. Who am I kidding? Let's get more plastic. We even have the steam turbines are running. It's going great. Now this is gonna take a little while to chill down. Right now the water is at about 20 degrees. It's a slowly but surely sort of thing. Right now we're suffering through the thermal conductivity of petroleum, which is 2.0, which is crazy as it sounds, is actually a decent thermal conductivity compared to everything else we have like water. So until we get some super coolant, this is the best we're gonna have to do, which 
it'll still do the same job. It's just going to take it a lot longer to get there. Sweet little update. We've actually started turning to ice. It's taking quite a few cycles, but we're getting there. I don't want to load our deep freezer coolant line yet. I think it would just siphon too much chill out of this box for now. So I want to get a lot more of it into ice before we load this up. I think we're going to load it up with petroleum again. Actually, we could even just do oil. It has the same thermal conductivity. The only difference is the petroleum has a slightly higher specific heat capacity, which remember is like, it's like the battery. The amount of heat that amount of mass can hold. So we added the coolant and it's going decent. We've got a lot more ice than we had before. The coolant itself is already below one degree. And what's even better is our barbecue is now refrigerated. It's not deep frozen yet. So we're still losing 5% per cycle, but that's still pretty good when you have barbecue that'll last 20 cycles. And that's with this chlorine at minus two and a half. Now it's gonna keep going down. And when it hits around the minus 18 point, that's when we'll have deep frozen food. Oh, we're cooling with ice now. Look at this. Our petroleum, our coolant is down to about 11 to 12 degrees and it's leaving at around five to six. So this ice is getting colder and colder, which is great because even our deep freezer coolant's coming back at minus six, not too long before we have an actual deep freezer. But now I get to introduce you to the hospital. Oh boy, this thing is fully packed. First things first, you can see we are getting the room bonus for it being a hospital. Now it doesn't actually give it a morale bonus. For instance, down here on the washroom, you can see the effects are morale plus two. Well, this doesn't give any effects. It just says quarantine sick duplicates. Maybe duplicates know to stay quarantined in this area? I don't know. But this area has all the features. We're going to consider this the sort of ICU. You can see we got some duplicate sensors. They kind of look like cool medical equipment. And whenever there's a duplicate laying in this bed, this light comes on. In fact, give me somebody. Come here, Gambit. All right, Gambit's going to come up here and highlight the awesome duplicate motion sensor system. Turns the lights on. If there's a duplicate laying in the bed, there'll be light on him. It'll look real official, real hospital-like. The duplicate will feel like they're getting taken care of better. They also have a little live-in suite with a mess table, sink, and lavatory. Now, at a minimum, they have to have a toilet and a mess table in order to meet the minimum requirements for a hospital, plus some sort of medical equipment. We also have some beautiful plants. Makes the duplicates feel better, too. And then here, we have the doctor's storage area. It's where the apothecary is, which I don't know when the last time I've built one of these are. It's got a bunch of cool things that I definitely want to use. We just have no doctor to be able to make them yet. And then this little area this is what I consider the ER. We have a sick bay and a disease clinic. And once again, though, no duplicates can use it because we haven't found a doctor. We can use this area. We just can't use this area quite yet. I don't know, though. Looks pretty official to me. Since I know the deep freezer is actually going to take probably another hour or two to really get down to minus 18, I figure since we're doing it, we might as well do it right. We're going to go ahead and remove all these insulated tiles and put in the metal tiles. This is going to give us the ability to be able to separate the doors from the actual water. And we want to do this now to start chilling down this water as soon as possible. What's probably going to happen is all this ice is probably going to turn back into water because too much of its chill will be leaving. Oh yeah, look at this mechanized airlock. It went from minus two and it's all the way up to four right now. But we'll get our aluminum metal tiles in place. And look at this, Dr. Banner didn't even get stuck. But you can see the ice turning right back into a liquid. Now this isn't gonna last long because remember we're only trying to chill the water down to 25 degrees. Once this thermo sensor and this thermo sensor are at 25, it'll open these doors and that'll create a vacuum. It's definitely gonna take a long time though to get this tank to back down to minus 25. Right now, it's sitting at about 40 degrees. All in all, though, I'm happy with our progress today. We might end up adding a couple more steam turbines because we're turning some of the plastic into naphtha. And that's not what we want to do. Now, the plastic has a melting point of 159.9 and our steam room shouldn't be getting up that high. But you can see our steam turbines are constantly running, so the, the addition of one or two more will probably help out. We'll see. But our industrial sauna is up to temperature and doing what it's supposed to do. We're getting all the materials out of it that we need. We're already up to 26 tons of steel and that's after using some. We finished our deep freezer, our water tank cooling system, which then ties into the rest of the base and, and cools the parts of the base that need to be cooled. I love our simple little kitchen redesign. Long story short is we have the refrigerator here set at three kilos. Only this auto sweeper can reach it. 
So this auto sweeper is responsible for two things, reaching into the deep freezer and loading up the refrigerator and reaching into the deep freezer and loading up the electric grill with whatever ingredients we need to cook. For instance, meat. This auto sweeper takes all of the meat and puts it into this conveyor loader. This conveyor loader then ships it down to the deep freezer where once again, this auto sweeper will grab it, and put it in the electric grill whenever we're ready. So I hope you enjoyed this episode. Oh, this? Don't worry about this. Hope you enjoyed this episode as much as I did, and I'll talk to you soon.